revolutionary work in Malta and Bethlehem. The revolutionaries, when they came to Zimbabwe, they went to Malta and Bethlehem. Remember, Malta and Bethlehem, it was under the leadership of Mozelena. The later on, the leader died in 1870, he was succeeded by Lord Ngola. So we want to talk about the missionary activities in Malta and Bethlehem. The London Missionary Society and the Roman Catholic Missionaries, here we are talking about the Jesuit missionaries under the Roman Catholic operated in March Bethlehem. So we want to look on the way of the London Missionary Society led by Robert Moffat, later on John Smith Moffat and the Jesuit missionaries or the Roman Catholic missionaries in March Bethlehem. So let's start with the London Missionary Society. So we discussed that the London Missionary Society it was the first missionary society to operate in March Bethlehem. It was established by Rodi, Robert Moffat, who was so much close to Muslimazi. He became a friend of Muslimazi and Muslimi allowed Rodi to establish a missionary society. In Marte Benelend. So, Muslimazi, he allowed Rodi Robert Moffat to establish the first missionary society at Spinati in 1859. So, the Nebel now, you are now receiving the gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How do receive Jesus Christ? Rodi, Rodi, talking about the gospel in Marte Benelend at Spinati in 1859. We see that this session it was run by the son of Roby, who was called John Paul, John Smith Moffat. So John Paul Smith Moffat, he was assisting his father to spread this gospel at Inyati. There was also another person who was also preaching the gospel at Inyati by the name Thomas Morgan and also William Stein. So Tony, Tony Joe, and William Skye's widow also assisted Rodi to speak, to speak, to preach, speak about the good news, about the gospel in Mark Bellelin, specifically at Inyatin. We see uh, that Lord Bengula, when he became the king of the Nepali, he still allowed the missionary society, the London Missionary Society, to operate in Mark Bellelin. Lord Bengula went a step further. He allowed the London Missionary Society to open another mission station at Walk Fountain in 1870. Preach the gospel, talk to the devilers, open another missionary station at Walk Fountain, and it was opened in 1870. Not forgetting that that is the time when Lubingula became the king of the devil in 1870. So this mission station at Walk Fountain, it was a run by a reverend uh, Charles L. That reverend who later on influenced Lord Ingola to sign the Raj Confession, which eventually paved way for the colonization of Zimbabwe. So the missionaries, they devoted their time to preaching. They were preaching the gospel, they were teaching the gospel, they were trading also with the local people, they were also printing books in Eastern Nebele, so that the Nebele could do the Nebele Bible, could read. So they spent much of their time printing much of books. They also spent their time attracting those people who were not well, the sick people. They also spent their time building schools, building churches. So they are seeing that the missionaries in Matabele, they had a lot of work to do, preaching, teaching, printing books, attracting those who were trading with the ones that did a lot of people. <laughs> so though they spent much of their time at doing this, their missionary activities were not successful. So let's look on their failures. Why they failed in Marte Beneland. The missionaries were not trusted by the Bebele kings. Lord Bengola, first, Zligazi did not trust the missionary or these are missionaries because these missionaries, they preached against the practices that were done by the Bebele. So they did not trust them. Lord Bengola, Zligazi did not trust these missionaries because of the gospel that we were preaching. This gospel, it, uh, what, it opposed some of the practices that they were doing. E.g. raising missionaries, they preached against the raising, they preached against the polygamy, they preached against the traditional ceremony that was conducted by the Nebelians, they preached against social classes. Remember, the Nebelians were organized. 